The, uh, this press conference is sponsored by Enough is Enough and several other uh, organizations that support police accountability in Rochester and specifically a police accountability board to be established by ordinance by city council. In 2010, Robin Turner, while reporting a crime, was picked up, slammed to the ground, and kneed in the back by the Rochester Police Department officer. In 2011, Cardell Livid ran from police and while lying face down on the ground, was punched, kicked, and tased by six RPG officers. In 2013, Benny Ward, while waiting for a bus, was dumped out of his wheelchair, kicked and beaten by RPG officers. In 2013, Dwayne Ivory was beaten unconscious by an RPD officer after asking the officer to accompany him to his estranged girlfriend's house to collect his belongings. In 2014, Quentin King was beaten by an RPD officer while talking on his phone in a laundromat. The officer claimed to be looking for a man with a gun who bore no resemblance to King. In 2015, Rasheed Griner, enjoying music at the beach, was beaten by an RPD officer. In 2015, Sean Gordon was pepper sprayed and beaten by RPD officers after video recording the arrest of his friend who was misidentified by the officers. In 2016, Sylvan Simmons was shot three times by an RPD officer who misidentified him as a suspect in an unrelated crime based merely on his race and on the make and model of his car. In 2016, Ventura Parker was slammed to the ground by an RPD officer after he asked her to go back into her yard, and she did so. In 2016, Ricky Bryant was beaten by several RPD officers after being mistaken for a man with a gun who bore no resemblance to him. In 2017, Ronnie Edgerston was stopped for a traffic infraction by RPD officers while driving to the store. He was beaten so badly his eye socket was broken and his ribs were fractured. All of these are survivors of police brutality they, and they were all unarmed. All are people of color. Their lives were devalued and their bodies were damaged. No officer was terminated as a result of civilian allegations of excessive use of force from 2002 to 2016, according to the professional standards section, session, section of the annual reports. There are countless cases like these, including use of force against people who have mental and physical disabilities. This is why we need real accountability transparency and justice when dealing with police misconduct. Enough is enough supporting organizations and members of the Rochester community call for a new police accountability board with powers to investigate, adjudicate, and discipline Rochester police officers for misconduct, especially related to excessive use of force. Good morning. I'm Jacinda Edgiston. I'm Ronnie Edgiston's wife. On February 11th, 2017, I had been ill for weeks. When my husband left to get some ginger ale and Pepto-Bismol to try and calm my stomach. On this night, my husband got stopped by Rochester Police Department and eventually got badly beaten to the point that his eye socket was broken and his ribs were fractured. I didn't find out until 4 a.m. the next day. Due to the assault of my husband by Officer Thomas Kirk, I have faced many challenges such as PTSD, anxiety, and the lack of support for our children financially and emotionally. My story is just one example of how survivors aren't the only ones harmed by police brutality. Wives, girlfriends, significant others, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, children, we are all affected by this and our by these actions in our community. Due to all of this, it is imperative that Rochester pass a police accountability board yesterday. Thank you. Blessings to everyone here. My name is Sean Gordon. In November 2015, 2015 excuse me, I was walking with my friend Dowell Hackleberry 
when the police stopped us because they thought Dao was another person. Even though they saw his identification, the officers falsely arrested Dao. I video recorded this false arrest and after putting Daryl in the car, the police chased me, tried to tase me, tackled me, and mace and beat me up. I was arrested and when I filed a complaint with the professional standards section of the police department, they did nothing on my behalf. I still suffer physical pain and mental anguish from this event. The defamation of my character can never be undone. So beyond us all here today, there are some horrible people in our justice system. Please remember that we are a people recovering from the genocides of different nations. And we are living in communities that are still poverty stricken. The things I saw and experienced as a man going through human suffering after the justice system experience move me to tears every morning I wake up. I reach out to PSS and the truth became even more clear to me. That I and the rest of the world are seen as a statistic and a case that are looked at with police biases. So that stops the right of all our people there. And um, due to our constitutional rights, we have entrusted our government in order to protect us. But we have no justice. In response to our call for police accountability last year, City Council contracted with the Center for Governmental Research to study the issue, and their report was presented to City Council in November. Members of Enough is Enough have reviewed the report and have identified several concerns that warrant a response. One of the key issues for a police accountability board is to have the ability to impose discipline on the officers. It is obvious that the police cannot police the police. Yet there is a widespread misconception that New York State law prevents anyone other than the chief of police from imposing discipline on police officers. Unfortunately, the Center for Governmental Research's report to city council mistakenly perpetuated this misconception by inaccurately citing New York State law. We called this matter to their attention and asked them to issue a me memo citing the correct information, but they did not. The power of an independent body to impose discipline on police officers is essential for true police accountability. And an increasing number of cities across the country are creating bodies that can do just that. This is why it is imperative that the community have a complete and true understanding of what the law says. New York State law does not preclude the proposed Police Accountability Board from disciplining officers. New York State, State Civil Service Law Section 25, oh, sorry. New York State Civil Service Law Article 75 explicitly acknowledges that an officer or body, such as the proposed Police Accountability Board, can have the power to discipline officers. Several legal experts have studied this law and the cases in which it has been cited. They have found no evidence to dispute the claim that an entity other than the police chief can administer discipline. Now it is important to understand what our proposed ordinance says. We are recommending the use of a disciplinary matrix, which is transparent, consistent, progressive, a tool to determine the discipline based on the type of misconduct and whether the officer has had previous infractions. This matrix would be negotiated and agreed upon by the chief of police and the police accountability board so that the consequences for police misconduct will be <coughs> fair and appropriate. We expect that in most scenarios the matrix would determine the discipline to be administered with no disagreement between the chief and the police accountability board. When we say the police accountability board would have the power to administer discipline, what we mean is if there is a disagreement between the police accountability board and the chief, the police accountability board would have the ultimate authority to say what the discipline will be. This is why this is the only fair way to ensure that the process remains fair and neutral. 
eliminating any possibility of favoritism or leniency. This is the crux of the issue. If city council establishes a police accountability board that has independent investigative authority, but does not have the final say on discipline, there is no assurance that the appropriate discipline will be administered and further misconduct deterred. It would be a hollow victory in the cause of justice for all those whose lives have been irre irrevocably altered by unnecessary use of force against them by those who are called to protect and serve. We are proposing a police accountability board with five essential powers. One, independent investigative authority as an agency of city government that is independent from the Rochester Police Department. Two, subpoena power to compel the pr production of evidence and witnesses. Three, the authority to conduct misconduct hearings. Four, the authority to determine and impose discipline on officers. And five, the power to evaluate systemic patterns, practices, and policies and procedures of the RPD to recommend changes and prevent misconduct. We are hopeful that City Council will establish a police accountability board with all of the powers enumerated above because justice requires accountability, accountability requires independence, and independence requires disciplinary power. Thank you. Okay. We will now take the questions. I know you guys are pushing for much further kind of measures, but there have been some kind of changes in RPD. How do you see those changes, and do you think that they're doing anything to foster trust and bring that back in the community? The changes, I don't, I'm not sure what all the changes are, but at the present time they seem cosmetic. I would say there's there's an attempt to have police community relations that's a term that's bandied about a lot um, trying to have officers seem more human and get to know people in the in the neighborhoods and and that's great um, we, we are in favor of improved community police relations you know everybody should know everybody and everybody should get along um, we're not seeing that uh, that feels like a public relations campaign to us. I would say um, it does. It, it doesn't. We haven't seen any real changes related to police misconduct. Um, we still see a police officer charged with shooting someone, who then that that man has to go to trial when he didn't even have a gun. He did, he did not shoot the officer, the officer shot him, and then we go to court and we see masses of police officers showing up at the trial in force, including the police chief, to intimidate the judge and intimidate the, the lawyers and intimidate the family. So it seems disingenuous um, to say we're for police community relations when when the rubber hits the road that, that doesn't seem to be the case mm -hmm. can you say which cities um have changed or are trying to change and how successful it's been yes um the cities that have changed uh, a lot of them are in california and california has very similar laws to new york state so everybody feels like oh new york state uh has these really harsh laws that prevent us from having true police accountability. That's not the case. Rochester would be at the forefront of the new movement to have greater police accountability, but other cities around the country have, in fact, um, instituted uh, policies with discipline power. New, New Jersey, um, Oakland, California. Oakland, California is, is uh, newly uh, has a, a system that, that we are trying to emulate. But other cities like uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Berkeley, San Jose, um, thank you for the question. So to, to just to clarify, your, your biggest concern with the CGR report that was in response to or what city council called for is, is the piece about um, police chiefs being the final or the ultimate 
um, decision maker in terms of, of discipline or accountability? That's one of the big concerns, um, is, is how they misinterpreted, they, they did not do their own homework, as far as I'm concerned, to in, find the true interpretation of this New York State law, uh, Article 75, um, and thus gave misinformation to city council and to the public. That's why we're holding this press conference. But um, Do you think that was intentional? I don't think it was intentional, no. I think they're very busy people. They had a limited amount of time that they had to get this report done. Um, and they, they did welcome us to a meeting where we talked about this, but they didn't ultimately decide to correct their mistake. There were other mistakes in the report as well in terms of how they um, characterized the data. And that's all in the press packet. We, we, don't, we didn't want to go into the minutia of the data, but there were several areas where they miss, uh, they compared apples to oranges. Um, they, they didn't compare, for instance, the, the data from Syracuse uh, which focused on um, Vitaly? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to let Vitaly answer that question. So the, um, in comparing Rochester to Syracuse, Rochester, for Rochester's numbers, they used both internal, like police-generated complaints and citizen complaints. And for Syracuse, there's only citizen complaints. And so the fact is, Rochester sustains a lot more internal police complaints than it does citizen complaints. So when you compare numbers properly, if you look at just civilian-generated allegations of force, then you see that Syracuse sustains four times, um, com these su such complaints four times more often than Rochester. Which, so that analysis wasn't present in the report. It was very narrow, and we feel they didn't compare you know, comparable data. Yeah. And all that's in your press conference, mm -hmm. press packet. Other questions? Was there any kind of communication? I know they didn't fix the error, but any kind of communication from CGR about that? Like I said, we had a meeting with them. We pointed out all these mistakes to them. Uh, and, you know, they were very gracious in hearing us, but they chose not to. And then nothing after. To okay. correct it. They, and in email correspondence with them, we tried to say, are you going to, you know, correct your mistakes? And they elected. No, we're not going to. Um, so, that, so that's one of the reasons why we want to get this word out. Um, and you can see in your press packet our whole rebuttal. Uh, we have a whole rebuttal report. Uh, feel free to quote it widely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just for you to know, we will be reprising this event in a different format at City Council tonight. Um, we will be at City Council. These same speeches will be made along with others. And um, so we're hoping to make our case every, in fact, we'll be at City Council speaking every month until this ordinance is passed. Do you have any updates from City Council about where they stand on this? We know that President Loretta Scott and uh, Vice President McFadden and Willie Joe Lightfoot, who is the chair of the Public Safety Committee, are taking this matter very, very seriously. And we know that there are other members of City Council who are in favor of passing some kind of police accountability measure. Um, we are very pleased that they're taking this seriously and that there is um, the political will on, especially President Scott's uh, case, to, to move this forward. What we want to make sure is that it it has teeth, that it's not just, oh, let's, yeah, it's a little better than before, but it's still not what needs to happen. So we're really pushing for it to be a really full, comprehensive, with all the powers that we've, we've elucidated uh, to be enacted. Can, can you say something about the power of the union? Um, the Locust Club uh, Police Union, which is named after the club made of locust wood that the uh, batons are made out of. You didn't know that. Uh, the Locust Club, uh, we haven't had a lot of conversations with them, but we uh, know that they are in negotiations with uh, 
City Council, and we believe that ultimately this kind of a, of a uh, ordinance would be in favor of those police officers who are doing a good job right. and are following the rules. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're a good police officer and you don't do any of this stuff, you have nothing to fear from an ordinance that says you'll be uh, disciplined for police misconduct. So we would fail to see why the Locust Club would uh, oppose it. But don't you think, you have a sign up there right now that says there was one good cop. I mean, some people might challenge that because that kind of contradicts what you just said. Mm -hmm. He'll show us the good cops. Yeah. That'll be fine. I mean, I think that the concern is that a lot of people, it kind of counteracts the, the, the it kind of counteracts the notion that a lot of people say, oh, well, there's only a few bad apples. So if we get rid of those bad apples, it'll be fine. But this is really a systemic issue. There is systemic racism throughout our culture, and the police department is no different. The systemic issues help the one good cop from being able to um, act upon his or her conscience because the thin blue wall of silence prevents them from speaking out. That's right. So that one good cop may not fear for himself or herself being um, punished for good conduct because they are exhibiting good conduct. But if they see, and we've seen videos of this, where other other officers stand idly by mm -hmm. while one officer is beating somebody up, mm -hmm. and then they don't say anything. So that prevents there from being for cops who are good to show their goodness. All right, if there are no more questions, thank you very much, and we hope to see you tonight at City Council and every City Council meeting after that. <laughs> Thanks again. Make sure you get a press kit. <laughs>